I've put together a small list of tips. Now, this list could have easily been 20 or more things long, but I've tried to narrow it down to the really key things that helped me when I was first starting out in astrophotography, and I hope that you find them useful too. If we haven't met before, my name is Nick. Welcome to my astrophotography YouTube channel. Let's dive straight into it with tip number one. Find darker skies if you can. Now, some of you might be thinking that that's not particularly applicable to you if you've got, you know, 20 kilograms worth of huge astrophotography equipment. The last thing you want to do is go from your garden and chuck all of that in the boot of your car, drive to a dark sky location, get it set up, do some imaging, and then come back and unload, etc., etc. But what I would say is that you can't replicate dark skies with good equipment. So you could buy the most expensive telescope, camera, mount, filters, etc., but you would be amazed at the difference just even one hour's worth of data from a dark sky location can make to the quality of your images. You can, of course, substitute darker skies for more integration time, but you do get to a point of diminishing returns. And so if you've never been to a dark sky before, even if you just grab your DSLR and a wide angle lens, I'd really recommend just giving it a try and seeing what results you can produce with darker skies as opposed to more light polluted skies. Okay, tip number two, if you're doing deep sky astrophotography, then you'll want to try and start auto guiding as soon as you can if you're not already. Even with a portable star tracker such as the Skywatcher Star Adventurer, you can still auto guide with equipment like that. It will only guide in right ascension, it won't guide in declination, but even guiding in one axis is better than not guiding in any axis. And it can be the difference between taking uh, maybe two minute exposures, depending on what gear you've got. So when you start auto guiding, you can then take, I've been doing 10 minute exposures at times. And that's the difference that auto guiding can make to your imaging. You'll no longer be limited on your exposure time before you get star trails because your mount will be constantly getting corrected. And just as a small bonus tip, if you're auto guiding, you can also dither between your light frames, which will also improve the amount of noise that are in your light frames when it comes to post-processing. Okay, tip number three, keep an eye on your histogram both when imaging and when post-processing. Now there's no exact right place for your data to be on the histogram, but I like to try and keep my spike about one third in from the left because then I know that I'm not overexposed and I'm not underexposed. There's an amount of room between the left hand side of the spectrum and the right hand side. Now when you're imaging, if your histogram is all the way over to the left or all the way over to the right, that means you're either under or overexposing. And what you'll want to do is adjust your exposure time accordingly so that you've sort of got that spike more towards the middle of the histogram or something along those lines. Because when it gets to post-processing, you'll be able to bring out out those finer details when you're doing your curve stretches and when you're adjusting your levels. If your histogram is all the way over to one side, either when you're imaging or when you are processing your final image, if you start clipping your data, and what I mean by that is having your spike all the way over to the left or all the way over to the right, then you're not going to be able to bring out those finer details in post-processing because that data just doesn't exist. And likewise, when you're post-processing, if you're adjusting your levels and you're bringing your spike all the way over to one side and start clipping your data, then you're going to start losing detail and your image might start to look a little bit fake in that regard. So that's just something to keep an eye on when post-processing your, your histogram is your friend. Tip number four, don't be a target whore. And what I mean by that is when you're first starting out especially, it's really tempting to just do an hour of data on a target there, an hour on a target there, and an hour on a target there. And what you'll end up with is three okay images that you'll share and you'll still be really happy and you'll produce a reasonable image. But what you could have done is spent three hours on that target over there on one night and produced one amazing image rather than three okay images. And you'll be much more pleased, in my opinion, with one amazing image than three half decent images. And I need to listen to my own advice there because of what I tend to do with clear skies being so few and far between in the UK, I'll generally do one night's worth of imaging, tends to be around five, six hours on one target. And then when the next clear sky comes around a few weeks later, instead of going back to that target to get more data and make an even better image, I'll move on to something else. So I need to listen to my own advice there. And the last bonus tip that I'll give you, which isn't really a tip to be honest, is just do whatever feels right for you in your situation. So feel free to completely ignore all of the tips that I've just given you and tips that I've given in other videos because they are just that. They're tips. They're not rules that everybody has to follow. And so 
if you're not having fun doing astrophotography, then you're doing something wrong. And I think we can all get a little bit sort of tunnel vision and a bit blinkered in becoming quite serious about achieving the best possible results that we can. But sometimes we forget that we do this for fun and sharing images is amazing. So feel free to ignore all of the advice that I've just given you and any advice that I've given on any of my other videos if it's getting in the way of you having fun because that is the most important thing. But if you are just starting out in astrophotography and would like some more tips and tricks on what to do when you're first starting out then I do recommend to watch this video next. I'll see you over there.